Um, hey everyone. The other night I was on Valors and I got some recommendations of books for me, from people, from the community, for me to read. So, I hadn't read any of those that I got recommended. This is kind of irrelevant, but still, you know, part of the story. So, I got thinking that if there's some books I haven't read, there's probably some actual published books that you haven't read. So today I just like to make this like, quick little video where one, two, three, four, Quick little video where seven of my, or some of my like favourite books or books I loved. And I'll tell you a little bit about them and I hope you read some of them. Um, this is the Radleys by Matt Haig. And the like caption on the front says, Reality bites in a funny family affair, clever and witty, which is definitely true for this book. Okay, and on the back it says, Meet the Radleys, an entire family in identity crisis. I think that is the perfect way of describing this book and why well, you should definitely read it. Number two is Solitaire and it's a book I found through Mavellas because the girl, when she got published, she was really young, I think. Yeah, her debut no novel was signed when she was 18 years old and this is by Alice Oseman. This book, I want everyone to read it because it's relatable. That's the main thing. Because the main character is called Tori and she's a girl with a tumbler. She seems to like not to get along with any of her friends and she, she's depressed. I think this is something, well, this is a book that many people could benefit from reading. The third one is Undone, and I found this book back when I saw Rotor on Quota, because someone started pu posting it chapter by chapter, and I enjoyed it, and I saw it in the bookshop and got overexcited. It's Undone, it's by Cat Clark, and this story starts off with Jem Halliday, and she's in love with her best friend. There's always a plot twist. Jem is in love with her gay best friend, he gets outed and T kills himself. This isn't a spoiler, it's literally what it says in the back of the book. And she spends the majority of the book, she's trying to find the person who outed her best friend and she's trying to get revenge on them. But as always, it's not as you think it'll end. This one is Alan Just in Blood by Kinder Blake. And I think I mentioned this in the video a while ago in the Burton book tag. As it says on the back, it is gorgeous, brutal, heartbreaking, merciless and cool as hell. And it also says, Castellewood is no ordinary guy, he hunts dead people. And if that's not enough to make you read a book, I don't know what is. This one is Bright Rose by Jane Oliver. And I feel like I've mentioned this before. And on the back it says, Briar Rose believes in fairy tales. So she's doomed to fall asleep for 100 years on her 16th birthday, and she wakes up in the most darkest, twisted fairy tale. It's a dark version of the original Stephen Beauty Tale. The last two books are the two books I always recommend to people when they ask me for recommendations but no one has ever said like actually I've already read that and these are like my two favourite books in existence. This is The Bunker Diary by Kevin Brooks and the main character is called Linus and he thinks the old man is blind which is exactly why the man got him. It was still dark when I woke up this morning as soon as my eyes opened and knew where I was. A low ceiling a rectangular building made entirely of whitewashed concrete there are six little rooms along the main corridor. There are no windows, no doors. The lift is the only way in or out. What's he going to do to me? What am I going to do? If I'm right, the lift will come down in five minutes. It did. But in this time, it wasn't empty. And my final book is The Death House by Sarah Pimbra. And I found this book through my brothers. Because it was the prize for a writing competition, and because the prize said signed book, I was intrigued. So this is my first and only signed book, I think. And in this book, the main character is called Toby, and his life is entirely normal until he takes a blood test. He's taken from a family, and he's live, he now lives in a place called the Death House. Even though you don't really find out much about the blood test itself, you know they're all there, and eventually they all get the sickness. And they, when they get sick, they go to the sanatorium, and no one ever returns from the sanatorium. So eventually Toby's withdrawn from his housemates and as you'd expect he spends a lot of time wondering how much how much time he has left to live. Then there's a new arrival in the house and she changes everything. That sounded so cliche. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this little video. I think by the time I edit it it's going to be quite short. I don't know. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.